Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a final like no other. And up for the final, it is in the company of uh, my illustrious uh, wingman for this evening, Mr. Johnny McIntosh and uh, Mr. Shane Elliott. Thank you, wherever you are, for uh, taking the time to sit down and enjoy the next hour, hour and 15 minutes, when we will talk all things hurling, all things saffron, and all things GAA. Uh, Johnny, uh, I guess... The fact that we're here at all, given the year that's been, is a big bonus. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. What a year! What a year we've had! What a year with this whole coronavirus and everything that's went on. You know, and we all know what's gone on and everything in the game. So we're all just so delighted, so excited, looking forward to the weekend, looking forward to Antrim bringing the Joe McDonough back home, and that's really what we want to see more than anything. And ultimately, this is a great thing to have. What we're doing tonight is a great, and it's a great promo for the whole thing. But the whole weekend is about having that cup back in Antrim and it's having that cup back in North Antrim and in Belfast over the weekend. That's what it's about to us. So fingers crossed the boys can do it and that's what it's all about for us. Shane, what it's also about, what we're also looking forward to is Darren Gleeson, fair play to the Saffron manager, has allowed us to reveal exclusive of the Antrim team. That's coming up in about 15 minutes. It's winging its way to us digitally now. It will be an exclusive. Are you expecting any surprise inclusions, surprise omissions? I'm actually not, Mark, to be honest. I think Darren's wise enough to know that uh, what has got him to where he is, he doesn't need to make any too drastic a change, to be honest. I know the boys are, tra are training tonight, so he's probably holding off to tell the boys what the team is before we can actually release it tonight. But I'd be actually surprised if there's any major changes to, to, to the team that have really dug him out and got him through and got him to the final. So I'd be surprised if there's anything major. Maybe he's a choice to make about Neil. Neil's fit again. Does he bring him in? Does he keep him out? So that will be the interesting one to watch. Tweedledum and Tweedledee will be with me for the rest of the evening. Here's what's uh, coming up, by the way, the rest of the evening. We really have a pretty, pretty packed programme for you. We'll be joined uh, by uh, Antrim's 1989 All-Ireland captain Kieran Barr, also Liam Sheedy, of course, two-time All-Ireland manager with Tipperary. And we're also going to hear from our Antrim football manager, Enda McGinley. He's only got the three All-Irelands. He'll be joining us uh, from Tyrone. And uh, the current Antrim manager, Darren Gleeson, we'll hear from him. We'll hear from uh, oh, a host of others, Gary O'Keefe in there among them, the Antrim captain, Conor McCann. We are going common to Monskull. You guys in common to Monskull have been outstanding and unprecedented response and your entries, three different categories, and we'll be revealing the three different winners and an exclusive winner a little later on. And then all of that, and on top of it, we have the brilliant voice uh, finalist, Brooke Scullion, singing for you. We'll have more music as well. We have a decent chunk with Brooke, who actually was a big commode. We'll hear about that uh, a little bit later. And topping it all off, Johnny and Shane, I've asked those guys to pick their top 15 Antrim hurlers over the last 50 years. That's coming your way, the last half century of Antrim, by the way, excluding any from the, anyone from the current squad. And I can tell you, uh, the, the, the teams they've picked, they haven't got it. They haven't got a Lula Bell. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight's event is a Saffron Business Forum production. And uh, we do want to say a special thanks to all of you. All of you who in any capacity have contributed to the Antrim cause. Players, fans, administrators, sponsors, the list goes on. So here is a brief message from County Chairman Kieran McAvanagh. And first, on behalf of the Saffron Business Forum, you'll see them all over the place here this evening. Here's Paul McAuliffe. Well, the Saffron Business Forum is a network which is here to help um, the County of Antrim and all that it does in GAA terms. So supporting the teams, uh, promoting the culture and working really hard for the Gales of Antrim. What it also does then obviously for its members is create a network where we're trying to do business together. So we're trying to provide value to the business members and we're trying to provide funds to very important funds for the county. We've been very restricted this year and we're really very grateful to all of our members who have stuck with us, who pay a fee every month. And normally we have four events and a big lunch and so on, and all of those things have had to uh, wait in abeyance until next year, obviously. But this, the money has still come in and uh, the, the, the support is still there. We've had two very good administrations. The last, the last county board and this current county board under Cairn has really made progress. I think you can see that in the spirit in the county. You can see it here. Uh, you know, we, we helped to put some money into uh, here at Corrigan Park, where our friends um, St John's have, have, have done a super job. What we've tried to do here uh, and everywhere is, is get on with it. And I think you're beginning to see that paying dividends on the field. I mean, the hurling team have obviously had a fan absolutely fantastic run. You know, the Camogues are, 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 are in uh, uh, an All-Ireland final. Uh, and, you know, I think the senior football team really showed that, that they have real potential. I mean, I think it's 
it's a great appointment that, that Enda and Stephen have taken on the county senior team. Uh, and and like I, I have great hopes for that next year. As we head in to an All-Ireland Joe McDonough final, what's the message? Well, the message is enjoy it. Uh, let's, let's look to the future, a bright future hopefully for Antrim. Uh, off and on the, the pitch, you can see behind me, uh, Corrigan Park is completing uh, a one million pound uh, facelift off the park. And I'd just like, like to thank all the people at Saffron Business Forum and uh, Club Maitrema who have supported us. I came into a well-organised house, so I was very lucky. I'm going into my third year. But Antrim is moving in the right place. We had only a few weeks ago the, the, the good news about Casement Park. That should be two, next two to three years. We have Corrigan complete, and on the pitch we are producing the goods. We, we've had a great uh, this year club championship, but we also had the previous year a very good club championship. Uh, throughout the country, people are following us, so that's good. And I would like to see that transfer into the senior teams, which I think it is. We've been promoted to Division 1 in Hurling. We are in the Joe McDonald final in, uh, and we will be at the top table next year in Hurling. And in football with Enda McKinley, we're also hoping that we m move up the leagues. Kieran McCavan there. Johnny, you do get the very real sense that things are really beginning to stir both on and off the field for Antrim. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Everything that's gone on this year for Antrim has been, it's been a strange year and we alluded to that at the very start, Mark, but everything is kind of coming together for Antrim a little bit, certainly in the hurling front, if nothing else. You know, we, we've managed to get to Division 1, which was probably, to me, almost unattainable at the start of the year, which has been a great achievement. Getting to this Joe McDonough Cup final has been a real achievement, don't get me wrong. I think if we were talking... Eight months ago, people would have said, that's not realistic. Westmeath, Carlo, they look like very, very strong contenders to win it. So everything that's going on, there's a lot of work to be done. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not going to sit here with you, Mark, and be untrue to myself and tell you everything within Antrim Hurland and Antrim GAA is perfect by any stage. I took an under-20 Hurland team this year. Things weren't perfect. And, you know, people will tell you that there's work needs to be done. There's more effort needs at that level. And there's a lot more commitment and effort needs to put in at our development squad level. But to keep things positive, what's going on at senior level will inspire that, I hope. We're looking for the kind of kickback that came from 89. 89 people at Kieran Barr and these teams, mm. that inspired a generation. And we want this team to win the Joe McDonough on Sunday and inspire another generation of young players to come in and play. I'm just looking at Northern Property behind his head, Shane, a great big brick in the wall, indeed a cornerstone, the appointment of Darren Gleeson. You've often told me that it's no coincidence that keepers make the finest of managers. He's been a shrewd appointment. It's been a very shrewd appointment, actually. He's probably surpassed even my own expectations because, obviously, I, well, my son Ryan's involved, so I get an early sense that the players liked him. The players bought into what Darren was trying to say. Liam had brought him up with him. Liam Sheedy had brought him up with him last year, and it was quite clear that the, 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 the guys in the panel liked what he was doing and liked what he was saying and liked how he went about things. And he brought a, I think he's brought a real professionalism to it, not to say it wasn't professional before, but it, I think he, he, he has the gym programs, he, he has a good hurling setup. And what he's done well, to be fair, he's got good men around him. I think he's brought the likes of Gary. Gary, I came from my own club, Johnny O'Campbell from Loch Gale and Jim Close from Rossa. So he is, he's got good Antrim men around him that are probably helping keep him right in some ways. But I think he's done a great job in bringing the whole thing together. And if you'd said at the start of the year we would be promoted to Division 1 and we'd be in a Joe McDonough final, I think whatever Northern property and sponsorship are putting towards it, it's been worth every penny. The bit that really gets me there is I think, unless I stand corrected, you actually said that Gary Kane and Jim Close were good Antrim men. Did you, did, you did use that I, phrase? I did, I did use that phrase, absolutely. Well, you couldn't, if there's one thing about Gary, you could say many things about Gary and I could tell many stories about Gary that maybe he couldn't go out on the air. But if there's one thing about him, he's a very, very devoted Antrim man, Deloitte man and, and Antrim man, absolutely. There's a producer in my ear saying that we have the team starting 15 in the house. We're going to reveal that in a moment or two, but first uh, let's hear from the man who makes a 350 mile trip, a uh, round trip from Portro. Uh, he's a twice All-Ireland winner and uh, an all-star goalkeeper. And he's at the Helm. He's actually in Dunsilly this evening. Here's Darren Gleeson. It's fantastic for the county. You know, as you've seen the last couple of weeks leading into this game, there's been, you know, excitement all around the clubs. See the colour starting to come up. See the kids in school doing their doing their competitions and talking about Antrim Hurling and that's what we're here to do. We're here to uh, promote the games within the county and our flagship team has been doing that greatly this year. Has the season surpassed your expectations, promoted to Division 1 and now the biggest single day of the year in the hurling calendar, Antrim will feature? 
Yeah, I suppose our goals at the start of the year was uh, to be competitive again. I knew this team were capable of going forward onto the bigger days and they've proved that. As someone who's been there and done that, two All-Irelands and an All-Star with Tipperary, is there a Croke Park factor even in an empty Croke Park? There definitely is. There definitely is. You're going into an unusual surrounding. You know, uh, if it was full, you know, you deal with that. But when you're going into a hollow place where every word can be, can be heard, where every, every mistake is even highlighted more, um, I think it's a, it's a different arena. But at the end of the day, it's a field uh, 90 metres by 140 metres, and it's the same as being here in Corrigan Park. Geographically, Kerry and uh, Antrim just about as far apart as you can get on this island, but in a sense, this is almost like a derby game. You've become so familiar with one another. Does form go out the window? It, it will for this one. Genuinely, it will for this one. Like it's a, you know, it's a one-off game. Kerry will come in, the wounded animal. We'll come in trying to protect what we've, get, what we've gathered over the last three games against them. So it will take on a life of its own. There's a really good rivalry there now. And I just want to remind you that uh, there is a football team also out there and the football manager has three All-Irelands. You only have two. <laughs> Can you win one with Antrim at senior level as a manager and get it up there for us? No, I can't. I'm only registered in the one place. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave. Maybe, maybe Enda might come out of retirement and tag out for the lads. He might get four. Big man's been a breath of fresh air. Look, uh, we, the team's in, so... Uh, Let's not keep you waiting. I want to also say to all you school kids who are watching this evening, thanks for staying up. Mums, dads, let them stay up until at least half past nine this evening. It's very, very important, especially if they're coming to Mons School. Here, exclusively, on up for the final, brought to you by the Saffron Business Forum, is the Saffron 15 for this historic All-Ireland final in Croke Park on Sunday. <laughs> show you that team in a few minutes or two but for now I want to make a big thanks to to Marco Mackay McKay he's from the League of Advertising here in Belfast and he's been responsible for those brilliant graphics and also been responsible for really the growth and assistance of Antrim social media so Marco Shane uh, you've any surprises for you I guess the thing that jumps at me there is no Neil McManus I mean no he hasn't played any Joe McDonough because of that hamstring but he must have been trying desperately to get back yeah, well, no one knew, as, as many of us do, that he, he absolutely would have been desperate to get into play in a Croke Park final before the, the, the senior final. But no surprises, I, I, that's the team I would have picked. I've watched all Antrim games this year, to be honest, I wouldn't have changed anything about what Darren has, has, has ended up with there. I think Neil was maybe a dilemma, Conal Cunning was going and coming back in to, to the, the rack, and Conor Johnson, I hear, is going really, really well. So he probably had three or four that were, were on the edge and maybe thinking, should I start them, should I not? But mm. I wouldn't argue with that team at all. Johnny, how much of an unsung line is Antrim's half-back line? Jared Walsh, I've watched outstanding in the club mm. championship this year. Paddy Burke, solid and reliable and dependent as ever. And then Joe Maskey, that, that's a... That's a big line. Yeah, it's a serious line for Antrim. I've been so impressed. Jared Walsh has been one of my players of the season. He's been, for Ross, I watched him a lot, and he was so, so impressive for Ross. What I really like about Burke at centre-back, he's very unspectacular. But, you know, 
Burke just sits there. He doesn't do anything. He protects Donnelly behind him, you see, and that's very important that he sits and holds that. Don't be surprised. The way Kerry will probably line up, they have a very robust, heavy, big full forward. He did come out a little bit in the last game and caused a few problems, so don't be surprised to see Donnelly and Burke maybe interchanging a little bit on Sunday in the bigger pitch. And Maskey has just developed. Mm. A couple of years ago, people were saying, i seen... And I think you and I done it, Mark. I think we seen Antrim and Limerick down in Cushendall. Burke got a very short shift. There, or not Burke, uh, Maskey got a very short, He got 20 minutes and was taken off. Yeah. He just looked a bit green and not maybe up to that level. But he's really developed and really grown into the position. And he's, he's really one of Antrim's best and, defenders. As, as he says, growing into, Conor McCann really has grown into that captain's role. And that full forward line, Dan McCluskey and Kieran Clark are either side of him. Shane, you're not surprised by that. Because he's been able to shake things up a bit, Darren, right throughout the Joe McDonough. That's the line you would have gone with. That's the line I would have gone with. If you went back to the league final, Conal Cunning was exceptional. You and I commentated on that, Mark. Conal Cunning was, uh, was exceptional in that final. You thought he'd be a shoe-in coming back in. But Kieran Clark has slotted in there very seamlessly, has been extremely impressive. Him and Conor McCann, every time they get the ball, they look like they could score a goal. But I have to say, that is, a lot of that has come from the half-forward line. I've been very, very impressed by the half-forward line. When they break the line, and a lot of Antrim's goals this year have come from Niall McKenna, James McNaughton, Michael Bradley, breaking the line, creating the space, running at defences, creating the openings for the likes of Connor and Kieran, who have been deadly in terms of the way they finished it. So, no, I, I like the look of that team. Johnny, who's the best uh, goalkeeper in the Elliott household? I like his son. <laughs> Um, I'm not so fond of the father. I think Ryan's got a lot of attributes. I think his father gets a lot of undue praise, to be honest. Ryan doesn't make half the mistakes that his father made. But uh, no, I think, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a tribute to both of them, I think, to tell you the truth, that the father has finally come through, you know. So uh, I, think, uh, I think his father has a lot to be proud of, not only as a, as a, as a young hurler, but as a young man. I think Ryan's a, he's a great young fella, and I think, uh, I think Shane has a lot to be proud of. Not to be... As, a, as an old uncle, maybe I get a wee bit soft sometimes, <laughs> but uh, Ryan's, uh, Ryan's a really good young fella and I hope, uh, I hope Sunday goes well for him. It's, uh, it's his first time in Croke Park, so we're, yeah. all, we're all a wee bit nervous and we're all a bit edgy for him. As, uh, yeah, well, his yeah. dad made a few mistakes before him, as we all said, <laughs> uh, five past Shane, etc., etc. We'll not go uh, into that. But, I was going to go, uh, go po uh, pointing no elbows, uh, but who lost four uh, uh, club uh, finals uh, in Croke Park? Listen, and there four. is an old joke about me in Croke Park. And we came from Lock Eel, this joke, I have to tell it, Mark. We, go we, on, were, go beat, on, go we on. were beating the six, six Mile Bridge, beating as a final in 1996, and it was 5 12 to, I can't even remember what we scored, but we pulled it back. And the joke going around Lock Eel at the time was, what's the time? And it was five past Elliot. <laughs> um, I've never forgot yeah. that. I've never forgiven Lough Gale for that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's good. To, uh, I, I, I've, I've a real. I think the the team have a real good shape about it, and I think they're a team made for Croke Park. I'm going to let Johnny and I'm going to let Shane have a wee. Uh, it's actually believe it. Here's an exclusive for you. These Glens men are so shrewd that they brought in cups, and it's not coffee or tea in there, but it's beer. This is not true, by <laughs> it's the way. This is, beer. This is so I'm going to let them have a wee sup of beer on this historic and unprecedented All-Ireland Final. Uh, we're going to remind you of the Antrim team one more time. And I'm also going to have a complete change of pace when we get back, a change of gear here on Up for the Final. Uh, we'll have more chat and music, and we'll see you shortly. Here's a reminder before we take the complete change of gear of Anton's starting 15 one more time. <laughs>
it really is uh, very evident that the stars are beginning to align for the Saffrons, both on and off the field. And on uh, the very mention of stars, delighted to say that joining us here this Friday evening for your delectation, our very own Brooke Scullion. Brooke, fresh from The Voice and fresh from a 2020 like no other for you. I've been very lucky this year. I've been one of the few to be able to sing all year round and keep live performances going. So I'm very lucky to be here with you today. Before we talk music, I gotta talk GAA. A name like Scullion coming from Balahi, you've gotta be steeped in it. I mean, I have played Antrim too many times over the years and been beaten too many times. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very, very sorry for them at the weekend. They done amazing getting through to the intermediate final and everything, but Cross and Passion will forever be the ruination of my uh, Camogie career. And I take it the Camogies had to be put on hold then as you pursue the music career? definitely hard given the commitment to a team. I mean, it's hard um, going and making training and then trying to like balance everything at the minute. I think I'm going to have to hang up the boots for now. 2020 has been this exceptional, this extraordinary year, but for you, it must have almost been the dream 2020. Um, thinking back to when it all started, October 2019, I had no idea that this would happen, that it would be dragged out as long as it was. Overall, the show has been on for 14 months. So that's, I mean, I'm, I'm exceptionally lucky that that has been the case and I've got to live it for a lot longer than most. But I mean, yes, we did have to socially distance and there was no audience and everything, but everything looked, everything went perfectly and I'm so, I'm so glad with how everything went. Yeah, you just look at these images behind you and that's only three weeks ago. It's and fake it, hair. it was an audience of millions quite literally. How have you coped with a celebrity? How have you coped with becoming famous? That's the thing, I don't really, I don't really buy into that. I mean, I go around my local town and everyone stops me in the shop and blah and everything and I just feel as though I've just done a pantomime in the school or something. <laughs> I'm not letting, I'm not let, reading any comments or reading any, into anything too much. I'm just focusing on creating a lot of music right now and that's the goal for me at the minute. Turned 21 this year, didn't get to celebrate. Uh, is the birthday celebration going to happen in 2021? Uh, I don't want to be too extra and have my 21, 21st again in March, but uh, I think I deserve it. I think I might, you know, I might just go and have a 22nd, but just do it as a 21st. I don't know. Look, I haven't planned anything yet. It's what, December now? I've got three months. You'll do whatever Granny Peggy and Granny <laughs> Sheila say. <laughs> Oh, they are the stars. I'm not joking. See, when I say I'm stopped in my shop, it's to talk about them. Oh, your grannies are the stars of the show. They are so beautiful. I know that. I do know that they are what everyone wants to see. I have no shame in letting them take the stage. I think Granny Peggy and Granny Sheila are watching in this evening. Granny Peggy's actually from Wexford. Is that where you get the camogie from? I'm not that good at camogie. I used to be, and then I did my knee, my cruciate. And I just, oh, look, I mean, I can hit the ball over the bar, like, but you have to give me a good bit of space. <laughs> that that share look, which you were wearing, <laughs> you were wearing so well there. It's kind of crazy that we've gone from Camogie to share, but kind of, that's the girl you are now, uh, <laughs> that you were wearing so well there. Cher, is she one of your inspirations? Because I know two Dolly Partons right up there. They're the, are they the big inspirations? Dolly Parton, Cher, Miley Cyrus for me at the minute. Oh, Miley Cyrus may be a bit too edgy for me right now, but give me a year or two and... No. <laughs> um, Cher, I went to see in concert and I've been to see Dolly Parton. And I mean, from growing up watching their performances to now be able to like have the chance to create my own performances, they're not going to be as risque right now. Um, but maybe if I had a stadium tour, stadium tour in like a few years, who knows what, what could happen. <laughs> If you're going to be channeling your inner Miley Cyrus, uh, you, you better reassure the grannies and all of Malahi that that will not be tattoos and it will not be multiple piercings. No, no, ta uh, no tattoos, no piercings, but maybe a wrecking ball or something in there. We'll get to wrecking ball in a moment, but your feet now back on the ground. The last three or four weeks, you've had time to draw breath. What's next for you and what's on the Christmas horizon? Immediately for me at the minute, I am focusing on writing. I'm doing a lot of songwriting workshops with different people, creating different types of sounds. I'm getting in the studio with Rag and Bone Man in January. So yeah, wow. I know that's pretty cool. Look, I'm trying to not play. I'm trying to play it cool right now. He sent me a voice message and I tried to send one back and made about 13 what, different give ones. Give us an exclusive. What did he say in the voice message? Yeah, look, it'd be good to link 
Uh, I'm down in Brighton. Hopefully that's not too far from you. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> that's so embarrassing. That'll that just be the, accent. That'll just be the global superstar that is Rag and Bone Man, yeah. given the, the, the little girl from Balahi. Who knows? Who knows what can happen for 2021? Uh, and there's a potential to, to dip a toe into North America and uh, your mentor has been uh, uh, staying pretty much on top of things. Megan is texting me a lot. Like she just want, wants to make sure that nobody's taking advantage of me because that can happen in the music industry. But it's good to have a mentor like her on my side. Uh, definitely gonna. I'm releasing an EP next year, early next year, and then for after that, I'm gonna go and tour parts of America and promote it and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> Given that you're dairy through and through, but you're only five minutes mm -hmm. from the Antrim border, would you would you park your dairy allegiance and? chop down the oak leaf for a moment and come over all saffron for us and would you wish our herders well in Crow Park on Sunday for us? Maybe into that camera. I can do this. Right, for one day and one day only, boys, just have my full support. Good luck in Crow Park and I hope you bring it home for one day. And then I'll be sad for the rest of it. <laughs> there you go, saffron's absolutely no pressure at all, but uh, the voice has said, do it for Derry, do it for Antrim, do it for us. It's been brilliant, haven't you? We know that you've had a phenomenally busy schedule. We wish you really, really, really well for 2021 and beyond, Brooke Scullion. What are you going to sing for us this evening? I think you're going to do a couple, are you? I'm going to do two. I'm not going to bore anybody. Um, I'm going to sing Nothing Breaks Like a Heart, which you've seen in the semi-final. And I'm also going to do a new Christmas one that comes out this week. Uh, it's like an Irish traditional version of Mariah Carey. Well, you're going to go get ready to sing for us now. It's time for me to say Granny Peggy. Granny Sheila, are you watching? Saffrons, are you listening? Here's what Brooke, the voice, does best. I heard you on the phone last night We live and die by pretty lights You know it, oh we both know it We got all night to fall in love And just like that we fall apart we yeah, we're broken Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing gonna save us now So this broken silence Like thunder crashing in the dark Crashing in the dark And this broken record Spins endless circles in the bar Things fall apart but nothing breaks like a Nothing, nothing, nothing gonna save us now Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing gonna save us now And this broken silence Like thousands are crashing in the dark And this broken record Spins endless circles in the bar This world can hurt you It'll cut you deep and leave Wow. Well, Mogi's lost very evidently the music industry and entertainment again. Brooke was brilliant and Brooke will be back just a, a little bit later. In about two, oh, less or fewer than, than two minutes, Kieran Barr, under 89, All-Ireland winning captain, Liam Sheedy. He knew, knows a thing or two about hurling and All-Irelands. And someone who knows absolutely nothing about hurling but knows a lot about All-Irelands. Then beginning a three-time All-Ireland winner coming up very, very shortly. But Johnny and Shane... Things you thought you'd never, ever, ever hear yourself say. We are going to follow Brooke Scullion with that most delicate of Dunoy baritones, <laughs> Gary O'Kane. <laughs> Gary, of course, uh, the youngest member of the 1989 All-Ireland final team, which lost to, to Tipperary. And now, uh, coincidentally, the longest serving member of Antrim's back team, backroom team. He's been five years, actually, in the job through the, the most recent set of managers. And uh, I've been taking a wee trip down uh, memory lane with the Dunloy baritone. It's a big game for us, Mark, you know, especially now it's an All-Ireland all day. You know, hell of a, hell of a day. But 
at the same time, we have to come out the right side of the, the result, you know. How good is this squad, Gary? And I ask you that in the context of promoted to Division 1 on the cusp of playing in Croke Park on All-Ireland Final Day. And it strikes me that, that there's a better balance about this squad than Antrim has maybe had in the last half a dozen years. First thing, Mark, uh, the thing about this squad, we've all the players out. We've only got, Antrim has always had a problem getting the best players out. Some didn't want to play, there was problems here. But this year, this team has really bought on to everything that's been set out in front of them. Are you fed up talking about 89? Uh, how, how, uh, how, how do you see it now, 30 years on, you on your... Uh, you marking Nicholas English that day and uh, and he had a game. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Mark. Uh, no, 89 89, you know, like... When you put it into perspective, this whole panel we have for next Sunday, I don't even think one of them was born. So, to them, it's, it's a fleeting memory here, mentioned now and again. But, uh, it was good days, man. good teams I played on in them days, you know, and you always remember things like that. We're going to have Kieran Barr on the uh, on the programme a wee bit later this evening. Uh, what's the message to your captain? I'm just telling him to behave himself, you know. He, he's a bit of a rowdy lot when Barr gets going, you know. As long as he behaves, he'll be OK. And if he doesn't behave, you'll sort him? No, he'll be all right. He's a big man. I always was. He's the captain. Say nothing. <laughs> Uh, that was Gary O'Keefe, always entertaining. It seems like an ideal time to say good evening, Kieran Barr. Good evening, Liam Sheedy. Good evening, Enna McGinley. Kieran, uh, your, old, uh, your old teammate there, uh, yeah, Gary, just uh, reminiscing and saying, I'm saying nothing about that man. He's a big man. Great memories. Oh, yeah, and um, uh, it was good fun, a good team. Uh, Gary was a very good player, gave, a good, gave great service to the county as a player, and now along with the, the rest of the backroom team, Johnny and Jim are, are, are supporting Darren very well. Um, I think it was very interesting hearing what uh, Darren had to say about being competitive on the day and getting the team to be competitive. But I think uh, it, Darren is a huge advantage uh, to the Santrum team in that he's been at all Ireland finals. He's won all Ireland finals. Uh, it, makes a, it makes a really big difference to players when they're talking to their their manager and they're talking to their backroom team that they're led by a guy who who has been there and done it uh, and knows the routine and will make it routine it's very important that they make it routine that this is a game of hurling and uh they're there to win the game of hurling that's that's the bottom line Liam Sheedy good good evening to you Liam uh, nestled down there in Munster and Tip and Portro uh, thanks for joining us Liam uh, you know Darren uh, pretty much as well as anyone. Uh, no surprise to you, presumably, as as a fellow club man, that he is doing what he's doing with Antrim. No, no, he's he's top class guy. He's um, he's a really, really progressive manager. You know, as Kieran has said, like he's he's done it all as a player. Um, you know, and had to work hard for that. You know, obviously being from our parish here, we wouldn't have many that to be making inter county senior panels. So he had to work his way through. But when he got his chance, and he he to wait a good few years before he got in between the sticks, but. You know, I think he's, he's, you know, Antrim have been very lucky to secure a guy that's really on his way up in his managerial career. And uh, I think he's loving it. He's loving the involvement with such a, I suppose, a proud county like Antrim. And I think they're really benefiting and buying into what Darren is bringing as well. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a long drive. I know from being up there a few years ago myself, you know, if you lose a match up in the Glens, you know, you've nearly four and a half hours to think about it coming back down in the car. But uh, Darren has a really, really serious work ethic. He's put everything into this and, you know, when Darren is in, he's all in. And I think he's got the buy-in from everyone around him. He's surrounded himself with a really good backroom team and a really good, I suppose, cohort of people up in Antrim that really care about the jersey and care about the, the, the hurling uh, team. So I, I think um, all in all, it's, it's been a perfect match and a perfect fit. And I suppose ultimately they find themselves now on the cup, on the cusp of greatness, having got the promotion. And obviously, you know, they'd really like to go out in the high, but, you know, it's not going to be easy. But I think he's... He's got them there. They're scoring well. They're clapping up great scores. They've a lovely brand of hurling and they're, they're well set to take the big stage on on, on Sunday. And uh, we also thank you massively. And we're not letting you go. We've about 10 minutes to shoot the breeze. But thank you massively for the input over the last few years, you travelling up and doing that with the Saffrons. I've got to say good evening to my old mate, Enda McGinley, just the three All-Irelands. Enda, I'm going to play a game of truth or lie with you, Enda. Are you ready? Ready. OK, ready. Here, here goes Enda. 15 minutes ago, were you wearing a Tyrone top? <laughs> I, was, I, was. I didn't know whether we were doing this in video or not. <laughs> no, no, truth or lie, Enda. 15 minutes ago, were you wearing a Tyrone top? True, true. <laughs> You're allowed to. You only won the three All Irons. Enda, look, brilliant that you've got the job. And do you know the first thing that jumps out at me is, uh, of all things, 
what a game Adam Lau is going to be. In the beginning, up against Mickey Hart, who just uh, uh, 05, 03 and, and 08. That's going to have a little bit of electricity about it. Yeah, absolutely. Whenever I took the Anthem job, I suppose, you, you knew it was a big job, certainly a huge job for me and, and Steve O'Neill and Stevie Quinn and Sean Kelly that are, that are in with me. Uh, probably the last thing we needed was Mickey Hart taking the loud job. We could have we could have done without that, to be honest. A lot of people were saying to me, if, if you go up there and you get good organisation, you get them playing well, you'll 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 get out of four. Mm. Well, suddenly now Tony McIntyre with Slego and Mickey Hart with Loud and mm. Harry Hanson there with Leitrim, and that's just with the northern half of Division Four. So, uh, certainly, I, I I know the work that's ahead of us. Can I give you a top tip, Enda? When you're, yes. when you're talking to Kieran McCavanagh, ask him for the same budget as Mickey Hart's getting from Louth. OK, that, that's all I'm saying. Just You want the same uh, budget. It, I think half of it would uh, do you all right. Then, if you get half of it, you'll be OK. Uh, look, I, I, I want to go back to... I want to okay. go, I want to pop back to Kieran. Kieran, um, an all-star back uh, back in the day with Antrim, and, and I'd said to Gary O'Kane there, are you fed up talking about 89? But... I want to run, I think you can see us, I want to run a couple of minutes up worth of, of the 89 footage and I just wanted to, to shoot the breeze and reminisce with you guys about that occasion, about Jim Nelson, about that team, the, the late Danny McNaughton we see there, the late James McNaughton, but it does feel all these years on that you're still the benchmark here and is that fair to say? Well, I, I think it's um, probably because at the time in that era, uh, we were we were very close to winning in All Ireland. Um, I think uh, 87, 88, 89, 91, 92. There's a whole series of games that we played that we were very close um, and just couldn't get over the line. So, uh, you know, if you compared it today, you'd be saying if if you were comparing like for like uh, in this era, we'd be up there and we'd maybe be like a surprise package of Waterford this year or. It would be like a Galway coming through, or, or uh, and, and so, so I, I guess it is a benchmark for people in Antrim when they look back uh, and say, Well, you know, uh, uh, what amazes me about it, Mark, is that when I meet people and and uh, all over the country, um, they remember that team, uh, and they remember the color of the day. And what you don't realize when you're playing is that both for people in Antrim, but for people all over the all, all over the country and all over the world that were watching the game. If you weren't from Tipperary, you were supporting Antrim. And they remember that team and they remember the, the occasion. And it was a great burst of colour, a great sort of sense that something had changed. And what's interesting, I think, Mark, is that the number of years after that, you had Offley and you had Clare coming through and you had Limerick in a final got beaten. On, on, on. You had quite a change... And I think Antrim was part of that catalyst for other teams to go, well, we've played these Antrim guys. They got to an All-Iron final. They got very close to Vic Kenny in 91. So we can do this too. And in the next couple of years after that, through the 90s, you had the breakthroughs of some of these counties. Um, so I, I think that's part of that story. And, and that's why I guess people are remind, reminded of it so often and are fond of it so much because, uh, you know, it, the, the roads and mobile phones and communications all different today. Uh, compared to that era, it was very different. No, it was brilliant to, to, to look at those. Uh, Liam, you, you, you're still with us there, and uh, I have a confession to make to you. It's taken me 30 years to even so an iota of love toward Tipperary. I, for 30 years, <laughs> I cried. I was in the hill that day, right? Mm. Uh, I, I think all of Antrim was in the hill <coughs> that day, but I was in the hill that day. And uh, uh, every time I saw the Premier County strip for the next 30 years after that, I, I just uh, it, it got my dander up, as they say up here. But you look back at those days, and Kieran is making the point there, that in a sense, Antrim became a threshold or a gateway for other counties who said, look, Antrim have just stunned awfully in a semi-final and made it to a final. We can do that too. Oh, no question. Um, you know, I think when, when somebody jumps up and... You know, I'd probably even say that, you know, Clare in 95 came from, you know, very far back. They hadn't won anything really since since um, early in the 19... You know, I think it was 1914 or that back back then. So it definitely was. I mean, I, I think the 89 Antrim performance was catalyst, as, as Kieran said, for, you know, you had you had first-time winners coming, coming along that hadn't won it in a long time. So the 90s was the year where it didn't be the traditional counties. It was more about, you know, the Wexfords and the others putting their hands up and Limerick and the others getting so close and Clare coming on board. So, you know, and I think I think that's what, you know, 
someone coming from from the field and as as, mm. as you say Waterford are there this year but you know they you know they were there they were still there you know three years ago in the final but you know like when I look at Antrim and I look at the volume I would say Antrim is a sleeping giant in terms of you know and I would say you know whether you're whether you're in end of shoes or whether you're in down of shoes like I mean the the potential there is to grow the game and the GA in Antrim is massive yeah. um, and you know it's it's difficult you know for someone like me that was driving up it's difficult with to encourage people to come up it's difficult to get challenge matches but I would say you know for any for any county to have your flagship team doing really really well is hugely important so for Antrim to be in Division 1 and if Antrim could go and finish the job in the Joe McDonough I think the impact it could have on the youth and the, and I suppose that you know that they'd like to connect with the GA I think the prize goes beyond uh, Joe McDonough Cups it's what you might be able to do in Antrim in the future because mm. To me, we had, there's one director of, of hurling in, in, in Ireland in um in, in Martin Fogarty. Um, yeah. Martin Fogarty, yeah, yeah. exactly. And I, and like to me, you know, what you know, imagine if you put somebody as a director of hurling in Ulster, what could they do? Because I think, you know, really when I, you know, myself and Kieran who played the game of hurling for for years, I mean what hurling has given to us, I think it's one of the best games in the world. So I just love to see more kids getting the opportunity to play and I just think with the volume in Antrim there's a massive opportunity. But hopefully what's gone on with the hurling team and even Lenny done a great job of the football and is leaving a really good situation for Ender to kick into. So, you know, I just think Antrim has real scope for growth when it comes to GA. And Liam, hopefully Liam, you know, can, can can I ask Liam just what is it about what is it about temporary coaches? If you look this weekend, of course you have Brendan Cummins who's going to be involved with Kerry, you have our own Darren Gleason and of course you have Liam Cahill who's resurrected Waterford hurling back to where it should be. What do you think it is with temporary and of course we had we had another man, Danny Cahill, up here for quite a few years. So, do you think are you are you breeding good coaches down there as well as good hurlers? Yeah, well, I, I I think we were fortunate. You know, if I take my own scenario and how I got into it, I mean, you know, I was very fortunate to be coached and well coached when I was a kid. And I always said if I could give something back, it would be a nice thing to do. And was well, look, myself and Darren are in the same club. I would have coached Darren for a number of years. I brought him into the Tipperary panel. So, you no, know, when you when you when you're in around. Um, Good, good quality setups and and the games are going well. You learn a lot, and as you said, it's great to see. You know, you know, like Brendan has done very well. He's coaching, as you're saying, Kerry. He's got, he's setting up against Darren, but Darren's on a very progressive journey. But like I, I think, you know, in Tip, there's a special connection. Actually, you know, we were up in Davids last year uh, or earlier this year, and I just think the Tip and Antrim thing. It's probably since '89. I think there was a great mutual respect. I know when Nick English meets Kieran Barr, they're 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 great friends. So I think there was friendships born out of that in 89 and I think thankfully they're still going strong and like if Tipperary ever can, can help out Antrim I think there's, there's a good connection between both counties which is very healthy Liam you don't need to comment on this but, I, but what I loved about Denny Cahill is that he dropped Johnny McIntosh <laughs> consistently that was, his that, was the highlight, <laughs> that was the highlight for me I'd give Denny credit he knew his hurling he knew, he knew his hurling really really well and uh, he, was, he was very switched Liam, on to the game and uh, two absolute <laughs> bastards just sitting there excuse my language but, on the Ender uh, and Kieran I don't want to get too political but Ender to you, to you first it's a question to both of you Adam really have been the nomads of Gaelic games for, for the last decade or so, uh, simply because they haven't had a home ground. And, and it's been a real problem. And I know that, that Corrigan Park has since been uh, redeveloped. But how important, and uh, first, and then Kieran, is it that we get Casement Park off the ground? Uh, it's hugely important uh, to get Casement off the ground. I think it'll have a massive, massive impact. Massive impact for the county, massive impact for the city, massive impact for the province. Uh, would I be using it as an excuse for why maybe Antrim hasn't been hitting the heights? No, I think that would be using it purely as an excuse. I think the player desire has to be there and that shouldn't really matter how fancy your home pitch is. Uh, there has to be a desire to play for your county and a desire to, if playing for the county, to reach the absolute best that you can be as an individual. And again, I don't think that should be motivated by how fancy your home ground is. Uh, so, Yes, Casement Park will be huge for Antrim and Antrim's future. I think it should be a massive carrot for the current young players that are there, the, the prospect of playing there, because that can be a real further momentum push. But I think the first thing that has to start happening is real leadership and a desire shown by the players on the pitch. As Darren has got into the hurlers and the hurlers are shown, and you can see the, the, the rewards of that, and that's without Casement. So for me, the, what happens when the pitch is independent of of that type of thing, but without a doubt, Casement can then come on mm. as an added push and hopefully continue a momentum that's been built on the pitch. Thanks, uh, Kieran. Uh, look, 
Belfast, Ireland's second city in terms of numbers and in terms of size. Uh, it wouldn't be acceptable for Cork not to have Parky Cueve or, or Limerick not to have the Gaelic grounds or Dublin not to have Crow Park. Is it acceptable for Belfast not to have had a go-to GAA stadium and a potential Ulster final uh, location for the last decade? Um, look, in terms of infrastructure, I think it's well documented that the economic benefit that you derive from having a stadium of that size, 30,000, 40,000 people in terms of the potential for, for the businesses around the area and for economic growth. There's no, there's no doubt about it. The stimulus for the economy and for people's uh, self-esteem and for them and all of the other benefits in terms of the playing sport, etc., uh, but I would I would echo what, what Enda said. I think if you look at what Dublin have done, and I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here, and in terms of they came up with a strategy called the blue, the blue wave about 10 or 15 years ago, and effectively that strategy was investing in people. So they have invested massively in coaches, and I think that the Gale Fast program, uh, and Liam has been involved in that, and my brother Mark Barr has been involved in that, Lots of people are involved in it around the country. It's a great program because it's investing in coaches and investing in the grassroots in schools. That's what will make the difference. That's what will absolutely bring up the standard of hurling and Gaelic football. And that's what will improve uh, the fortunes of the, of the flagship team, so to speak. Not a stadium. The stadium will have lots of other benefits. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But the, the, the coaching at ground level is the key. And we need to keep encouraging people, keep training people, keep investing in the primary schools in Belfast and across the county to encourage and develop the players of the future. That, that's the key. Okay, look, uh, I'm going to wrap it up, but I'm going to wrap it up by asking each of you in 30 seconds, and then you're, the, you're, getting, the, you're getting the short end here. To, 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 what has been your takeaway from 2020, given that we've been in a pandemic, given that six or eight months ago we thought there's going to be no club championship, there might not even be an, an inter-county championship. So... Enda, Liam, and we'll wrap up with Kieran. What has been your takeaway in terms of, your takeaway observa observation in terms of Gillick games in this calendar year? Oh, without a doubt for me, it's it's the realisation that, that the split season is perhaps the, the way to go for, for the game. Uh, it proved fantastic success for the club. I think it could well be the solution to the fixtures crisis that the club hasn't managed for a long, or that the association was Struggling with for a long period of time, so for me, it's a split season. Liam, for you? Yeah, for me, I think it, it stresses again the importance of what the GA brings to every house across the country. When you look at nearly half a million people watching the games last weekend, irrespective of the two counties that were involved, I think I think we shouldn't forget how privileged we are to be wrapped into the GA and the impact it has. Every sitting room will be full at one o'clock and at half three on, on Sunday for, waiting for these matches, and I think it just we should, you know, we, I don't think anyone will ever take the GA for granted anymore because they realise what it brings to every community right across the country. We're fortunate to be involved in such an association. Kieran, uh, take your GPA hat off and, and, and straight from the heart shoot. Uh, what is it that the GAA should be doing in terms of the primary observation? What should be bottled and poured out 2021? So I would agree with what Liam and, and, and as I said, what I would add to that is. The sense of community is extraordinary with GA clubs, uh, people delivering meals to people in the middle of lockdown, uh, people doing uh, go games and exercises and fitness online uh, and, and helping kids keep active and helping communities stay together and helping the people that needed help in the community. That's, it's extraordinary. The GA as a volunteer grassroots organization is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, and why is it that that case? Because it's got an ethos, and it's got a it's got a culture, and it's got a history that was to do with pulling something together and creating an identity. And that identity is still extremely strong. Now there are, of course, things to improve, and things went wrong uh, during the lockdowns and during the, the the season that we've just had. There's no doubt. I'm not trying to make it a rose tinted glasses here, but. For, for, for all of those stories that you might hear in the media, there are uh, a million other stories of single people, of clubs, of communities pulling together and helping each other. It's, it's been extraordinary. It really has. Gentlemen, thank you very much. The big takeaway for me has been that, that, that obviously the GAA 
sport in a, in a, in a sense in the, during a pandemic has, has largely been secondary. It has been the community, that has been the bond, it, that has been the backbone of the GA. Enda, uh, Saffron McGinley, Liam, part-time Saffron Sheedy, and Kieran, full-time Saffron Bar. Really, really, really appreciate your time, lads. Thanks, because I know you would long sit there at the other end of that. I would love to talk more. And the one promise that I will make you, if you can potentially commit, is that we should do this again uh, when things open up in the pandemic and do it really properly and have an evening crack. And just in case you're concerned, I will make sure that Shane Elliott and John McIntosh are not there. And the beginning, <laughs> Liam Sheedy and Kieran we'll, Barr. We'll also make sure we'll we're not there anyway, as well. We'll show up anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll be here on him in the matter of what. Slan, slan, lads. Liam, one final question I should have asked you. All Ireland senior final, who's going to win it? Draw match. Okay, but my next question is Fina Foyle or Fina Gale? <laughs> Draw match. <laughs> Kieran, Liam, Enda, thanks a million, guys. Really, look, that's a, that's a, that's a whole lot of All Stars and a whole lot of All Irelands that uh, we've lined up there for you. So, uh, guys, uh, look, where do we go from that? Will we go to all of you kids that I asked the mums and dads to allow to stay up until about half past nine, maybe even 10 o'clock tonight. Why is that? That's because Common in the Monskull has been brilliant to up for the match, has been brilliant to the Saffron Business Forum. Over the past week, we've been asking children from Common in the Monskull Intimate to get involved in our Road to Kroger competition. How you have responded. <laughs> Gurramila Milim Argov come on the Mon School. A brilliant effort from me. I want to thank all, uh, especially Potty Shivers, who Potty's been burning the midnight oil. He and I were talking on the phone last night. We weren't sure which one of us was in bigger meltdown. Potty, to all of your team and come on the Mon School. Well done. That was brilliant. There is a little bit more. There's a big bit more right now. Our judges have selected the, the following three winners from all of those entrants. And believe me when I say this, it was an unprecedented response from Common and Mon School. So you were mighty. You were mighty in terms of this uh, Saffron Friday. In terms of entries, we had over 40 schools. I think we might have had, I'll put it like this, the guys here in the studio says that their email system broke down because of the deluge of emails. So well done. We've picked three winners across three categories. And from those three winners, uh, all of whom I'm about to announce right now, Johnny and Shane will pick an overall winner. Each winner will receive an Antrim uh, signed jersey. They will receive an Antrim, a lovely little Antrim saffron hat and a copy of the Antrim yearbook. So our first winner uh, was the acrostic poem. And I hope you're watching. And if you're not, you can watch it again in the replay. Congratulations to uh, Maya Baker from Bunskull Fubble First Year. And uh, Maya's acrostic poem uh, is As Gielaga. I'll read it As Gielaga and I will apologise in advance to all of the, those because my couple of fuckle might not do this justice. Uh, and I'll also read it As Berla uh, uh, just so people get the full drift. So this is Maya Baker's from Bunskull Fubble First Year acrostic poem. And Donog 13th Nullog 2020. Na Agimurch. Obrigi Gukrua Ag Skoril Is Ag Shiv Na Bigi Nirvi Shach Craig In of Fein Tog and Trophy Dodo Hunti Rihigi 
Arnos Nihe, Leish, and Slither, a oil. As Lynn, and Trasnan, a Raki, and Slither. Ager Intrum, August Kiri, Is in the Intrum, and Foran Bridgel. Me fain a glim, son ear nur, a huggin shade and corn. Corn my yogurt. And uh, Asperla. Sunday, 13th December, the hurlers are playing. Work hard, scoring and running. Don't be nervous, believe in yourselves. Take the trophy for your county. Run like the wind to get to the slither over the bar between Antrim and Kerry. Antrim is the proudest team. I'll be jumping for joy when they raise the cup. That's Maya Baker, Bunskull, Fubble First Year, and her acrostic poem. Our uh, next winner, uh, and this is for the poster winner, and I think we will be able to get the image up. It goes to someone from uh, P1 in the Mary Queen of Peace School in Gunravel, and there it is. That's Conor McCann, and that's the entrant from Keevin Donnelly. Well done, Keevin, the Antrim captain, Conor McCann. That's the poster we chose. And uh, I have to say, guys, it's, it's a pretty good likeness. It's a, it's a really, really fine piece of artwork, isn't it? Sure it is. Yeah. yeah. It looks the part. Absolutely looks the part. And uh, our final category winner, this is the Key Stage 2 winner. That uh, belongs to someone from St Alkins in Armoy. And uh, well done to all St Alkins in Armoy for entering there. And our winner is Mr Andrew McLean. Andrew. I hope your mum has you up. So Andrew wrote a 100 word essay, what being an Antrim supporter means to me. My name is Andrew McLean. I play hurling for Niamh Podrig in Armoy. At school, we are being taught hurling for PE by Woody. He's a rascal. Uh, Andrew didn't write that, I said <laughs> it. He is very nice and helps us learn new things about hurling like a roll lift, uh, block. I like playing hurling. I would love to play for Antrim. When I'm older, my favourite player is Neil McManus. He's a great centre forward and a good player overall. I love playing hurling and hope I make it into a team at secondary school. I love Antrim. It is a great hurling team. So that's uh, Mr... Andrew McLean, P7. That is also Miss uh, Maya Baker. And finally, we had Keevin. Lance, you guys chose your overall winner. You only chose in the last hour. Shane, can you announce it for us? The winner is Andrew McLean. Wow. And I think by the magic of uh, satellite, we can say, hello, Armoy. Hello, Andrew McLean. Are you out there? Oh my goodness, Andrew, you look great. Andrew, you're our winner. You're, you're our you're, overall you're winner. What do you think? Say hello. Maybe you're not hearing me. Right, Andrew, listen, I'm going to tell you this, right? Not only is Connor McCann coming to your school. Who's your, who's your favourite pl player? Hello. Who's your favourite player? Maybe you're not hearing me. Right, Andrew, listen, I'm going to tell you this, right? Not only is Connor McCann coming to your school, who's your, who's your favourite player? Who's your favourite player? Hello. Who's your favourite player? Um, Neil McManus. So Neil McManus is your favourite player. Well, guess what? Neil McManus is watching tonight. So I'm not going to bring Connor McCann to your school. I'm going to bring Connor McCann and Neil McManus to your school. And Connor McCann and Neil McManus are going to give Andrew McLean's class a whole half hour coaching session how about that and neil mcmanus to your school and conor mccann and neil mcmanus are going to give andrew <laughs> mcclean's class a whole half hour coaching session how about that wow wow that'd be amazing well done Good luck to you, sir. Thanks for entering. A massive, massive thanks to everyone in Common in the Munskull for entering. That is our overall winner. COVID-19, Conor McCann will be appearing at St Alkins and Armoy, and we're sending Neil McManus along for, to, to boot. And guys, if you're watching this evening, that's a done deal. There's no way out of this. It's happening. Uh, on that note, the Antrim captain has been giving us uh, his thoughts on Sunday's final. 
It's a really, really strong panel, as strong as panel as I can remember being in Antrim and whenever I've been involved. There's a few big lads that you try to avoid. Uh, Ryan McCambridge, Donald Nugent, you don't want to get caught in a one-on-one -on -one drill with them. So Those boys know how to use the shoulder. They do, they do, and uh, yeah, they can use their stick, their shoulder, their leg, whatever, whatever they want. So. Does an empty croak park present as daunting a prospect as a full one? Do you still, will you still get that shiver that you're running out at headquarters? I think so. Obviously, Croke Park's an amazing venue and stadium, and I suppose with everything that's went on this year, uh, the anniversary commemorations, and it's going to be a really big occasion and special occasion for this team. Final question on your management team, Darren Gleeson and Gary Kane there. Good spread, I, I guess. What difference has the big tip man made? I suppose the, the, the biggest thing that we've seen is that professionalism that he's brought in. Um, he has an experience of being uh, playing in All Ireland final day uh, quite regularly. And yeah, no, he's, he's, he's brought in a great team and they've sort of instilled a, a belief in our team that yeah, we can compete with the best teams in the country and I think that's sort of evident in the way we're playing in the last, say, couple of months since the restart. And to all those Saffrons watching in this evening, Connor, what's the message? Because none of them, of course, will be able to travel to Crow Park. Um, I would just say um, thanks for all your support so far. I would say uh, be proud of, of the team that's going to play this weekend and enjoy it as much as hopefully we will. Um, get your flags, get your colours out and, and yeah, cheer on the team. He's a great man, is uh, Mr McCann. We wish you well, Con uh, Connor. all of the Saffrons uh, this Sunday in the final. Lads, we don't really need to talk about him because he, he, he's, he's the fulcrum, he's really grown into that role. What I want to talk about is a bit of proper debate because it's going to prompt a whole lot of fallout. I've been asking John McIntosh and Shane Elliott over the last week, can they come up with their top 15? We're allowing them six subs, the subs won't be revealed, but is the top 15 Antrim players in the last 50 years significantly excluding anyone in the current squad? So, uh, Shane, I'm going to start with you. Turn around, take a look at this, and talk us through your, your one to eight. Oh, uh, thanks for this job, Mark, actually. It's not a, it's not a pleasant job to do this because I left out so many good players that deserve honourable mentions, and I may talk about them. I bear in mind it's 1970, so I'm talking about players that I've seen playing, really. I know one in 1970 we won an intermediate, and there were some great players in those days, but... Going from one to seven, my, my goalkeeper's Niall, Niall Patterson, the great luck heel goalkeeper that played in the 89 team, a guy that I always looked up to. And when I came onto the county panel, Niall was the man in, in, in the number one jersey and he was always very good to me. Um, number two, Aaron Graff and a cushioned all. Um, great servant to the county over many years. Three, Cormac Donnelly, maybe some, you know, Cormac in a couple of years, but he's in there because in his, in his game, I think there was a couple of years where Cormac was the best full back in Ireland and had the potential to go on to do great things in the game. Unfortunately, injury uh, was against him. Dominic McKinley, I've moved, uh, on number four, I've moved Dominic McKinley, just basically, it's a bit like the All-Stars, I'm moving them around a bit. You're to, moving to not quickly enough. And I'm not moving quickly <laughs> enough. It's kind of tough. So uh, my five was James McNaughton, Gary O'Kane, centre half, and Sambo at number seven. Midfield, Paul McKillen and Jim Connolly, Ballycastle, Paul, obviously a first All-Star. Jim Connolly, the great Rossa player. Ten, Liam Watson, the Lockheed man, who did great things with his club, particularly uh, to, to take them to an All-Ireland club. Kieran Barr, couldn't leave Kieran out, captain, All-Star. Ian McCarry, who wasn't 11 in the 89 team, but absolutely deserved to be in there. Beaver was a great player. 13, Alistair Elliott, couldn't leave him out. I know he's a cousin. Gregory Kane, 14, and the great Alton Clute McFetridge, 15. Couldn't, what a full forward line. Right, Johnny, criticise that 15 for me. Who's he left out there? Desi Donnelly? <laughs> Leaving out Desi Donnelly is just probably... I, I, don't know. I, don't under, I don't understand how apologies you would leave Desi to, Donnelly. Apologies to Desi. All right, Shane, right, 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 right. you, you'll get your turn, Johnny. Okay. Talk us through. You have 45 seconds with your 1 to 8 and your 45 with your, uh, your, your rest. Where on you go. Yeah, well, well my goal is going to start off. It's not in the screen, but he's a guy I played with for a long time, and it's Didi Quinn. I just think Didi... And Didi's still playing, still winning... Still won in club championships, so to me, Didi Quinn has always been and has been, with the exception of Shane Elliott, of course, <laughs> as one of Antrim's best keepers. James McNaughton, cushioned all legend, the man who I watched growing up and was an absolute star. Woody McKinley, probably more suited as a centre-back, but I've named him at full-back because he has to be in the team. 
Desi Donnelly has to be in the team all-star cornerback. Also could have been corner forward for everyone. Goal getting corner forward. Niall Wheeler, my own club man, played for Antrim replacement all-star in 1971. Absolute legend for Glenarf. Gary O'Kane couldn't leave him out. And my old mate Carl McKeegan, just an inspiration in all the teams I played on. Cushion Doll man, he may be, but Carl McKeegan was always a leader in every Antrim team I played on. And that's why I've named Carl McKeegan at number seven. So there's uh, the two midfielders that I've gone for, and I'm maybe a little bit ahead of it. I've gone for Humpy Paul McKillen, which to me is just all day long. Best midfielder Antrim I've ever had by a mile. Jim Conley, again, absolute superstar midfielder. Ross man all day long. Best midfielder I've seen in a long time. Was lucky enough to play with him. Number 10, maybe a bit controversial. Again, good friend. Guy, I must say, Brian was the man that used to make training fun. We used to look forward to going to training to see Brian McFall. Superstar, could do anything with the ball. Fantastic hurler, brilliant player all around. Kieran Barr, Shane said, couldn't be left out. Aidan McCarry, again, should have had an all-star. I don't understand how they picked him. Should have had an all-star. To me, full forward line, a little bit different, but Gregory O'Kane, best player, one of the best players. Liam Watson, superstar, most skillful player. And again, as Shane said, the time's run out again, but Clut McFetridge, we never forget Clut, best corner forward Antrim's ever had. Shane, uh, Brian McFall, I know Brian you're watching, and I loved you as a herder. I remember the day you ran into the rock and you crumbled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what surprised you there? Oh, and his? Yeah. The fact that Alistair Elliott's not on it just, and I know he's a Deloy man and I know he's my okay. cousin, the fact that Alistair Elliott's on I just can't get my head around that. I know yeah. Desi Donnelly is an all-star and I do apologise to Desi because he was one no, I, no, no, I, no, I, no, I muddled no, no. over, but yeah, yeah, yeah. leaving Alistair out of the forward line is yeah. just ridiculous. No, but you shouldn't be allowed into Valley Castle again. That is, that, <laughs> that's <laughs> the bottom line. And my wife that works in Valley Castle. Line, yeah. You should not be allowed yeah. that. I suggest yeah. that the people of Valley yeah. Castle put some dropping, sort of roadblock Dropping Desi Donnelly is a bit like going into battle and saying to Achilles, would you stay back in the tent? The problem with Desi, Desi got an it's over. The problem was Desi's best position. Nobody knew he played goals. He played corner back. He played corner forward. He was just a great all rounder. For, and, for and all of you who are ever thinking of employing him as a manager, there you go. He yeah. doesn't recognise that's, versatility. That's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, I am going to indulge because uh, we. I, des I decided that I too would name uh, my fifteen from from nineteen seventy on, excluding the current uh, uh, the current team. So here's here's my fifteen guys. You haven't seen this, oh, so you'll, I haven't seen you'll this. enjoy yeah, picking. Yeah, no, you'll this enjoy be picking this apart. I would, I would imagine this will be good. I. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's, uh, you will absolutely have no surprise that it's uh, Big Neely. Yep. Cormac Donnelly Jr. and cornerback. I went for the hip and fullback. And Father Desi, and that's a full Donnelly line, father, father and son. And son yep. Leonard McKeegan, how either of you boys left him out, I have no idea. Leonard's Niall Wheeler, who yeah. was one of our first ever all-star replacements in 1970. And sure, Pappy, Pappy does what Pappy does best. One of the best hands in the game. We were talking to Kieran Barr there. Leonard McKeegan, for me, over 20 metres, was the quickest hurler in Ireland, bar none, over any generation. And that's a cushioned all man, so I'm saying that. So that's my uh, one to eight, and I know there'll be a little bit of controversy over that full back line, but I am recognizing that the Donnellys uh, did it and did it in spades. Now, wait till you see eight to 15. There mm. are a few, there are a few curve balls in here. I know uh, that uh, midfield is very conventional. I can't have overlooked Hippy or Humpy. Humpy's our last ever all star, 93. We only have five samples and other alongside him. A gone for Winker Watson at 10. Kieran Barr, Shane McNaughton Sr., one of the best hurlers I ever saw. Better hurler than Sambo, and Sambo would tell you that. And he, of course, went to, to Australia. Auckland Clute McFetridge, Eddie Donnelly at full forward, and my uncle Randall, and I make no apologies for putting him in there at the corner. Those boys in 1970, that 1970, and Eddie Donnelly, right. Eddie Donnelly was a wolf and a bear and a Hercules. That, that's what he was. So uh, I, I dip back a wee bit more into 1970, but that's, that's my 1 to 15. Can I name my subs just for the record? I go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 only I, I actually, be believe it or not, so yeah. I, we've all been given six subs. I'm going to ask you to name your six. I went with mm. my, my, my number 16, Sheehan Elliott, right? Uh, I went so. with Peter Boyle, Peter Porky Boyle, brilliant herder. He's now in, he, last I heard he was in Canada. I put Jim Close in there because I played with him at, at university and I played against him. And you just want a bit of badness in your team. And Jim was a real all rounder, could play corner back to corner forward. I'm not sure he'll appreciate and you saying there was a bit of badness with him. I think, <laughs> I think Jim has himself as a stylist He's, as opposed to a badness. He, yeah. Then I'm sticking, I got it. Like, because I was heavy on the Donnellys there, I got to put my old mate Brian Donnelly in there. He was just a Rolls Royce of a player. Yeah. So he's on my bench. I'm actually right, Shane, this is going to hurt. Uh, I've included, I'm putting John McIntosh in there. I watched, <laughs> well, I actually saw him, in, I actually saw him in Canton in Boston, rip 
New York apart. Now, I haven't said that. I could have ripped New York apart. But nonetheless, <laughs> he, he did it. Can and I come my... in there and John, can I come in on Johnny now? Uh, Johnny was close to being on my team, but was... as oh, you may I know, did. I had kidney yeah. stones two or three weeks ago. <laughs> and I can only describe my kidney stones like Johnny playing Harlan. They were very... They found it hard to pass. He <laughs> 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 had the knack of just shooting from yeah. wherever he yeah. saw the goals. Can Tony uh, Shivers please put this on record? Yeah. This is the last one of these I'm doing, Tony, right, by uh, the way. Can I just name my final sub? You I'm can. Putting in the late Danny McNaughton because Danny McNaughton yeah, yeah. was just indispensable. Shane, go with your six. It's, look, and it's hard to deny any of the players you've, you've talked about. Be, no pressure, but you well, better have Desi Donnelly on the bench. He is on the bench. <laughs> he is on the bench. He is now. I've just changed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Didi Quinn was a Didi was a great two lucky goalkeepers. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, I had Brian Donnelly as one of my subs. Brian was a, just an exceptional bull of a man when he was playing, and when he when Brian ran at you, he yeah he was so he was very close to being on. I had Desi as a sub. Johnny was an honourable mention. I'm not saying he was a sub, but he was an honourable mention. But I also had Brian McFall so. as a because Brian was Brian was a there was Brian a bit of badness in Brian. Brian was an operator. He was a, no, he, a he just player. didn't know what he was at. Good crack, great character, but he had skill. He could do things with a hurling ball that very few could. And I had a couple of you know, and I, I I try not to be too devoted to my own club, but the likes of Cookie McGookie deserves yeah, a mention. Yep. Uh, Cookie was just an ex a bull of a man, a bit like Brian Donnelly. Uh, Cookie right. wasn't blessed with enormous skip, but by God, he was. A word on Cookie, half forward, if you don't absolutely. mind. Uh, I remember interviewing Brian Whelan, who was one of the. He made it to the Aye. team of the century, and Brian yeah. Whelan said, "Cookie, it was like wrestling with a horse." That was. Yeah. John, give us your six subs. Uh, sub number one, Eddie Donnelly, 1984, under team of the century. I think Eddie Donnelly was two replacement all stars and. Again, the stories I hear from 1970, certainly from my father, Eddie Donnelly was one of the best players in that team by some way. Alistair Elliott, I did not forget Alistair Elliott. I was lucky enough to play with Alistair Elliott and he was an absolute incredible player. You didn't player. forget him, but he won't forgive you. I, no, I no. Well, no, he'd never speak to him again. He'd just never speak to him again. <laughs> Alistair Bye. would be, uh, what would happen inevitably was Clute would probably pull something early on and Alistair would be on very quickly. So he knows his place. <laughs> Maliki Malloy, I think we've left it. I just, Maliki Malloy to me was one of the great stylists of uh, Harlan in, in an era when I came through when Deloy were dominating and everything, Maliki was just this. Remember he lost teeth that day in yeah, New York and, 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 and Boston, and, and, yeah. And Maliki and was just such, everything Maliki done just looked to me was so natural and so easy. We can't. I can't forget Sambo McNaughton. Of course, was Gee, super hold on a minute. You didn't, sir, hold on. I no, missed no, that. You didn't no, have no, Sambo, I didn't have your, Sambo I didn't, in the team. No, and, and I know you used, used to guys argue with that, but I, I just couldn't see ahead of now. And, oh, and yes, that's, that's, that's parochial politics. That's you a didn't have, bit, but hold no, on, hold I named Carl McKeegan. They'll put his windows in. No, I named Carl McKeegan ahead of his uncle Leonard. You're right. I could have put I could have put Leonard McKeegan there in front of Carl McKeegan, and I could have put Sambo. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Good luck the next time you're going for a pint and cushion doll. I don't drink and cushion doll. They'll put his windows in. Anyway, Sambo is what Sambo is. He's a, You've he's Sambo a, he's a superstar. Sub. He never Sambo's speaks to you again. Sambo you, left I, me as a sub I, in 07, well, so he's, he's, he's right, sub on my team. Sambo, <laughs> Sambo dropped him in 07, you see. That, that, there's, there's, there's history <laughs> there. There's you, know, history. I, I, you know, I've forgotten I'm all gonna, those days. I'm, but I'll, I'm, <laughs> because, we're li because we're live, I'm going to allow you the opportunity to re-include Sambo in 1-15 to and get rid of someone. Are you telling me that you're... No, there's no absolutely not one person in that team. You've got to tell me that you dropped Card McKeegan, one of the best players that Antrim have had for the last 20 he's, years he's, in place of he's had his chance right moving one, on Kieran Heron I want to include in my sub list as well Kieran Heron I you was, only get six I get, well uh, I've only named name. four thanks can I name six please <laughs> Kieran Heron was an absolute star go on, go on, go on, really go on. stylish fantastic player and I've also included Colin McGook in a player who That's I think really everyone who plays with him realised what he brought to the game in a word player. in a word Favourite Anton player you have seen? One player. Don't name, Ooh. just one name. I want one name. I'll, I'll, I'll start. Clute, for me, just would have paid, would have paid twice to see him and would have paid, and, and actually didn't have the best, uh, the longest career with Anton. But for me, Clute, magic. Shane? Growing up as a goalkeeper, I always admired Niall. Always Niall. liked Niall as a person and JT? I liked him as a keeper, yeah. Uh, controversial a bit, 
but a guy I thought just had everything going. Brian McFall. Liam, Liam Watts. <laughs> Liam, Liam Watts and just a guy Liam, who Liam. I just admired so much. A young player, even when I was a few years older than him, but we came onto the team and we all just yeah. stepped back and, and said, no my God. I just got a... Uh, my just, God. Uh, I, I, got I, a, I, I knew you didn't know much. I've got to give an honourable mention Absolutely. to Beaver in there. How you ever never got an all-star, you're right. Absolutely. Look, yeah. right, we could go on all night. We're not going on all night. We thank everyone who stayed with us. We've got about 10 minutes to go, and you know what? It's a brilliant closing 10 minutes. After all that serious stuff, here's a little bit of uh, Davy Fitz, Brian Cody, something to lighten the mood, Boris Johnson. You'll love this. Look, all I want to say is, you know, you know best of luck to the interim boys there on Sunday. And look, I know the Elliot boys up there in Dunlai for the last couple of years, you know. And Shane and Goal, I'd have given him loads of free advice down the years, you know. So I am 1,000% certain, Shane, if you just ignore everything I've told you, then I think you boys have a serious, serious chance the next year. Well, listen, look at the end of the day. Look at the end of the day. Look at these are serious, serious athletes. Even though, even though you're up against Kerry, listen, I give you guys a serious, serious chance. Why? Listen, looking through that team, look at, first of all, you got the two spy spies there, Keelan Malai and Connor Johnston. Then, of course, you have the man mountain himself there, Donal Nugent, a man who famously played a club semi final for 50 minutes with a broken elbow. I mean, how on earth to do that? Not even a painkiller, not even a discipline. And then, of course, you have James McNaughton fr from Lockheed. I mean, the man, talk about an all rounder. The man is a hodler. He's a boxer. He's a dancer. So, in, in, in three words, I'd say stand well back. And listen, finally, of course, and of course you have the, 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 the top of the, the tree himself, Neil McManus. Why? Because the guy, if he was chocolate, I'd say he'd eat himself. And even, he, even if he wasn't chocolate, he'd probably eat himself anyways. Hi, I'm sure this is both. Very best of, best of wishes um, to Antrim on Sunday. Um, listen, my advice, I've already given it to Pappy there, uh, Johnny Campbell and Jim Close. And my advice is uh, get the phone over to the guys up in the Hawkeye office there because uh, I know down the years any 50-50 calls or even 60-40, 70-30 calls. As I say, a good umpire is uh, better than a bad corner forward any day. Well, so listen, fair play at the anthem by Sam Sunday, and look at, I suppose, win, lose, or draw. Uh, at least now, uh, Conor McCann, uh, he'll finally be able to tie the knot because the wedding has been cancelled twice already, and uh, she'll not let him cancel at all time, I'd say. Yeah, well, listen, the one thing I'd love to say is, like, listen, the absolute best of luck to Antrim there on Sunday. Listen, I never thought I'd say that as an awfully man, do you know? And uh, listen, fair play to Darren Gleeson there, like, and who'd have thought at the start of the year that the most chance uh, a Tipperary man would have a win all Ireland would be uh, with the Antrim Hurlers in the Joma Tuna Cup. And uh, listen, I just want to wish you all the very best, and that's coming, as I said, from an awfully man, especially after what happened in 89. And uh, I'm not even going to mention the league match in Tullamore this year. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. Um... Yeah, look, I suppose just to wish um, Antrim the very best in the game um, against Kerry. It's uh, it's a bit like with Ulster. If if Antrim can, uh, you know, win the breakdown and compete to the scrum and the line then I think they've got uh, a huge chance. Um, first of all, I would just like to wish the uh, Antrim uh, hockey team uh, the very best of luck on Sunday. And I've no doubt, through your commitment and hard work, uh, you can bring the uh, Joe McDonough Cup uh, back to uh, Raven Hill uh, this year. Uh, sorry, I mean um, done silly. Uh, hashtag I absolutely haven't got a clue. Look, I'm delighted to announce that tonight, as part of the final deal, details of the Brexit withdrawal agreement, and after considerable lobbying from your right honourable chairman, uh, Kieran McAvanagh, and with it being Christmas, the Westminster government have committed an additional £40 million to redevelop Caseman Park, and it's going to be called uh, McAvanagh Park. Uh, yeah, look, for me, I think the key man the next year is going to be the man from St John's there, uh, Michael Bradley. Why? Because if there's an emergency and it's going to happen, no need to dial 999. Why? Because the fireman is already on the pitch there. No, Antrim in Aigon Giri. That means Kerry. It'll be their fourth meeting this year. They played in the league in Tralee. They played the division in two final in Tullamore. And of course there was a round robin in Corrigan Park. And I think if the Antrim team Sunday have half the talent as tonight's lineup on the panel here tonight, Mark Sidebottom, one of Glenara's finest hurlers. You could say a second probably only to Thomas Niblock. And Shane Elliott, a man who famously played in four All Ireland club finals. And lost them all. So I think disregard Shane's advice here tonight. 
And then, of course, Johnny McIntosh, another Glenariff man, who so laid back, I'm told they've a bed on standby for him here tonight. And I've heard even Sky have approached him after his great commentary in this year's Antrim Club Championship. And so if I was to call it, I think the team that manages to outscore the opposition by even a point or two at the final whistle could win it. So fun means That means, as a carry man, I'm sitting on the fence. Well, I mean, of course, these are extraordinary times, I mean, to be an Antrim footballer. I mean, you've now got two great thrown gills involved. You know, Anna McGinley and Stephen O'Neill as part of the Antrim management. I mean, of course, I famously applied for the position. <laughs> I mean, the letter I got back from the Antrim County Board was <laughs> undeniably, I mean, this was the irrefutable truth. I mean this sincerely. They said, with the greatest of respect, you're one All-Ireland versus their combined eight. I mean, Raleigh, this was one case. You were doomed to lose for once in your life. <laughs> it's just incredible. The brilliant, uh, incomparable Declan Tierney there. And uh, uh, Declan, uh, a big, big saffron thanks for all of your time and your effort and your energy for that. It was uh, brilliantly entertaining. So. Uh, thanks, guys. Speaking of brilliant entertainment, uh, this is off script here. I've got to mention one man in particular because he keeps texting me. It's Sean Kelly, the Antrim outgoing Antrim PRO. And I know, Sean, you're sitting at home with your dad, Jared. Jared, would you put your toe up his arse? He's always pestering us, <laughs> right? He really, really is always pestering us. Would you say, John, if you're, if you're talking about top PROs in the country, where would you put Sean Kelly in the bin? Sh 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 well, I'd, 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 sh Sean Kelly is the only man who ever actively. I actively sort of uh, campaigned, I suppose. But no, you know, Sean's a really good guy and Sean's done an awful lot of work. And he, he kind of brought the whole PRO status in Antrim right on. And I suppose just on that PRO, we do have to mention this magazine, which I've been shouting and scolded at all day. So this is the actual programme, the official programme and the sort of Antrim yearbook, which I think a lot of clubs and everyone have. So Sean will probably be secretly delighted, along with my old friend Niall Murphy, will be delighted that I've introduced this right, to okay. you. So we're not, that, that, 7.50. We, we have to mention not, we're, it. We're not at that point. We're not. Shane, would you reach me across one of those? And would you talk, would you wax lyrical about Sean Kelly? Is there anything you can say about it positively? Sean, well, <laughs> Sean's one of those guys that's hard to say anything negative about because he's very hard to dislike. Really? I Sean. find it easy enough. No, no, I, Sean. And, and <laughs> you don't know he has Sean that uncanny well night. No, I do. And he's, he's that uncanny <laughs> night. I think in the five years he's been there, he's raised the profile of Antrim. His Twitter accounts, uh, even during the pandemic, when he was doing games, when you couldn't see games, you couldn't know what was going on, Sean's <laughs> Antrim GA account was just exceptional. And he's just one of those guys you can't say no to. I've done things for him. I've said no Sh to him plenty of times. You? I've never, well, you won't take no I need to learn from you how to do that. But yeah. I think yeah. as a PRO... That's why you look, were so a PRO, popular at grammar school. A PRO, it says that in the name, public relations officer. Uh, I think he's raised I'll the public you, relations of Antrim I'll to give another you an level. I'll give you an exclusive. Sean and I share the same walking regime with our dogs uh, in and around uh, the south of the city. He pops over from the west and I pop over from poverty. Uh, and, and Sean carries... You're in the a, south. He, he has a... <laughs> He, he has a pink poodle. That's a brilliant dog you have there, Sean. Sean, uh, we said we mentioned you. We talked for you more. We talked about you more than we talked about uh, Kieran Barr. Jared, I'm sure you're very proud of him as a son, but he can be an awful pain in the bum sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, uh, by the way, uh, this is available for all Saffron Gales. It is the Interim versus Kerry. It's the it's the yearly booklet, and you can get it basically pretty much a, a, across the county now. And uh, uh, I think it's. Uh, it's also, by the way, every one of our winners this evening from coming to Moscow will receive one of these. And uh, if you would like it devalued considerably, we will get Johnny and Shane to sign it. That's not a We're nearly there. We've just two more little uh, things to do. You, you take a ream of velvet, you dip it in some uh, wild honey, add a dollop of balahi, spray liberally with essence of Christmas and ka -ching. We have Brooke Scullion. I don't want a lot for Christmas There is just one thing I need I don't care about the presents Underneath the Christmas tree I just want you for my own More than you could ever know Make my wish come true
the brilliant, bubbly, babbling Brooke Scullion. Right, it's it's almost time for me and Shane and Johnny to go. We're not going quite yet yet. Do you know what I love about being liberated from the BBC? I can do things like this where we never do commercial broadcasting. It's almost time for me to phone a cab, go back to my northern property, which is made of uh, Korea concrete, and call an evening to this uh, Saffron event. There you go. I, I've said it. Before we go, we have a couple of messages from uh, some very important people. Hi everyone, it's AP McCoy here. I just want to wish you all the best of luck um, for the match on Sunday. I know that it's the first time that Antrim have played an All-Ireland final day since 1989. I know that because I actually went to work for Jim Bulger uh, in Kilkenny uh, my summer holidays in 1989 and Antrim were playing in the final not long after it. So it's not something I'm likely to forget. Anyway, uh, I was just wanting to wish you all the best of luck. Try and do what uh, Darren tells you and that's basically win. And to do that, you've got to leave nothing on the pitch. Um, you know, these big days are all about enjoying it, but they're all about winning. Um, don't have any regrets. Best of luck, lads. I'll be cheering you on. Right, guys, you've ten seconds to, to wrap it up for us, Shane. Um, what's the what's the mood at the end of twenty twenty as we head into Christmas and the pandemic and the Saffron's promoted to Division One and on the cusp of the Joe McDonough? The year that's in it, Mark, hasn't been pleasant. Let's let's face it; it hasn't been the best year we've ever had. But I think, from a hurling perspective and from an Antrim hurling perspective, it's been a very good year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's given us something. In the mouth of Christmas, where there's not a lot of stuff to look forward to, it's given us something to look forward to. I think it's given Antrim people a real jizz in their step. I think it's given us all a wee bit of a lift, and it's given us something to look forward to. And if they could just get over the line, then 2021 could be a big year for Antrim Hurling, because that takes you to a whole different level. Lovely link there, speaking of things that aren't pleasant. Johnny, <laughs> what's, 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 your, what's, your, what's your take on 2020? I'm just going to go. Uh, yeah, look, I suppose personally 2020 was a tough year for us all, you know, um, from business and from life and from everything. That. I think, you know, I've, I've watched a lot and I think what Darren Gleeson has brought, I, I think we, we have to look at the sort of, uh, and I think it was actually Curly McAwain mentioned it as the catalyst for the whole year was actually Antrim playing Tipperary at home. And if you look at what happened after that, Antrim's whole season kicked on, you know, we go to bed tonight and we just pray to God that Antrim will come out the right side. It doesn't matter. They've, you know, they've beaten Kerry three times and it will not be easy on Sunday to beat Kerry again. But I think Antrim will be confident going into it. They have to go into the game, forget about where they are, and they have to win the game first and foremost. Then we start straight away almost into the month of January and we're building for a National League campaign. And we all know how different that's going to be. We're, not, we're no longer playing Meads and we're no longer playing Carlo and Westmeath. All of a sudden, we're playing Limericks and Kilkenny with the physicality in the team. But that's what our players need. That's what the young players in Antrim need to see. They need to see the best players in Antrim competing with the best players in Ireland. And once they know we have players, and we always know we have players in Antrim that comp can compete at that level, then we know our young players can do that. And then we know what it's going to take. And we know the infrastructure, as Kieran Barr mentioned, not just Kieran Barr mentioned about coaching coming in. And that's fine in Dublin to say we've employed 50 coaches. We've got to think in Antrim, where do we get the money to employ 10 coaches in the next five years, not 50 coaches? We've got to put these coaches into place now. We've got to get the coaches in place right away, and we've got to start developing the game right away. Shane, the beauty of that is I asked him to sum that up in 10 seconds. Uh, uh, no, Johnny doesn't do 10 seconds. No. Just ask well, Paul. Ask just, his wife. Just uh, ask maybe, maybe he does. That is enough of that. There's children <laughs> watching. There are children watching. Right. Children. So here's, uh, look, you just saw that the uh, lower third there of all our sponsors running across. I want to thank all of our sponsors in any capacity for what you have done for the Saffrons uh, over your term, putting your financial backing behind us. The revolution, I don't know if it's begun or not, but it certainly feels like it's beginning. And on that note, I also want to thank Mr. John McIntosh. You know what, I played with him for about a decade or more and, and he was all right and I wasn't. I want to thank Shane Elliott because down through the years, the last 20 years, these guys have been have been my wingmen on many, many broadcasts. And tonight, 
tonight they were in as fine a form as yeah, they... Yeah, and uh, I, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to say, you know, everyone in Antrim and everyone watching this has to take their hat off to this man here. Like, I know we slag and we... But this guy is the ultimate professional when it comes to this work. That's why people like Tony Shivers phone this guy and oh make him do God. these things. Oh he does God. this for nothing. Yeah. Just to make sure everyone knows that. This guy does no, this for nothing. I'm not sure about that, Johnny. I'm not well, sure about that. I'm not sure about that. For steady, steady, steady. He does it steady. for us and he does it for Antrim. And it's very important people understand Shane. that this man is an Antrim Gale first and foremost. Shane, and it has to be said. Something that's never happened before while we're broadcasting. I'm giving you the final word. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> final word is, Mark, well done you. Well done, the uh, Saffron Business Forum, who do exceptional work. I'm, and I've done yeah. a number of events with them who do exceptional work for the county. Well done, and good luck to the boys in Sonic. Uh, a final word for me is, Tony Shivers, if you're watching, I don't want to thank you, but I do <laughs> want to put my toe squarely up your arse. <laughs> OK, Tony, we're on YouTube and we can say that. Tony, it's been a pleasure fighting with you for the last couple of weeks. If you're ever going to call me, don't. Look, thanks to NIVAC. The studio's here in East Belfast at the top of the Castlereagh Road, which have hosted us uh, this evening and have worked uh, so feverishly with us down through the last week or 10 days to bring this up for the final Saffron production to you. Thanks massively, massively to, uh, to Shane Wallace, who's a guy who's been working in production with me from Donegal and gathering around Antrim around the county for the last week or 10 days. Also, um, I want to say it's night-night, but a massive thanks to all of our guests this evening, you saw them there, Kieran Barr, Liam Sheedy, Enda McGinley. But most of all, a massive thanks to you, our viewers, our supporters. We hope you've enjoyed it. We certainly have here. John's the Glens of Antrim man. Shane's the Glens of Antrim man. I'm a Glens of Antrim man. And this weekend, I guess we are all green Glens of Antrim, men and women. Don't uh, just take my word for it. Here's Joe McKeag from the Rapparees to sing us out. From me, from John, from Shane. Merry Christmas. Ian Throne. Abu. Slán. Far across yon the blue lies a true fairy land with the sea
Shine on, you mighty sufferings, shine on. May you make waves in Crow Park which ripple all the way back to your beautiful glens of Antrim and trickle on down through the decades. Shine on like the brightest and most brilliant saffron star in the firmament. Gura mila mila mayogov, slon hogus banacht, Antrim, abood.